Okay, so in this particular graph, um, they're asking us to investigate this function and come up with some summary statements. So we're going to go ahead and start with the parent function of this graph. I see on this f of x, which we're going to get to, I have x squared plus 1, and then I have a minus 1 out here. Well, there's horizontal and vertical changes happening here, and there's some stuff happening here, and there's a little bit of stuff happening here, but I want to start with the parent function and what it all starts looking like before anything else is entered in. So just 1 over x squared, and this is the inverse quadratic. So as I put x values in, my y value gets closer and closer and closer to 0, but it's never going to hit it. And then also if I put 0 in, it's never going to hit there. There's an asymptote there because it's undefined. Now, if I go ahead and change the 1 to a 5, it doesn't look much different. It does take this, this blue line is your 5 over x squared. So it goes out a little wider, but it still has the same asymptotes. You still can't have 5 over 0 because that's undefined. Okay. Well, then if I go to this m of x, it's a little different because of this plus 1. There's really no x value I can square and add 1 to that's going to make this equation undefined. So I can put any x value in, and you'll see here that if I did put in 0, it would give me 5 over 1, which is 5. So 0 to 5. All right, now if you look, though, there's still asymptotes. It still can't hit the 0. So if I was to use a table on this one, let's pull a table out. And you see basically negative 2, 1, negative 1, 2.5, 0, 5, 1, you know, and on and on. But if I start going out farther on the x, so let's go negative 3. Then let's do negative 4. Okay, then let's do negative 10. You see this? It's getting closer to 0, but it's really not hitting it. Let's try negative 100. Okay, still, it's going to go, it's still farther. That's, X, that's a scientific notation there. So you can tell that it's getting closer and closer to zero, but it's not going to hit it. And then let's see here, negative 1,000. Look at that. So it doesn't really matter. And let's see if this one, sometimes it shows up as one, just because the, calcul the calculator itself doesn't like to um, round it. So... So you can see that there is an asymptote there because it's never actually going to hit zero. So let's stop looking at this particular one and then let's look at what the actual one they've asked us to check on. And that is f of x. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of these two as far as being able to see them. And I'm gonna put this one in. Now, the only difference between the m of x and the f of x is now we have a vertical translation down from five to four. Because if I put 0 in here, it's going to be 5 over 1, which is 5, minus 1, which is 4. It still has an asymptote, but now the asymptote isn't at 0. It's at negative 1. And so if we take a look at a table, let's also do a table on this one. All right, and we'll show you how it goes. So I'm going to do the same thing I did before. So I'm going to type in negative 3. All right, it gets closer to 0. Um, and then I'm going to type in negative, I mean, sorry, it gets closer to negative 1. Sorry about that. I was looking at that going, wait, that doesn't make sense. And then negative 4, it's going to get closer to negative 1. Then negative 100, it gets closer. Negative 1,000, look at as I go out towards negative infinity, it's still getting closer. Now, at one point, it may give us a 1. So let's, let's look at this. All right, 1... So we're doing, see now how it gives to negative 1? This calculator can't round as far as it needs to go. So it looks like it's a negative 1, but this is rounded by Desmos. And you'll see the same thing if I put in a negative million. So i got to make sure I count the number of zeros. Look at that. It's, it's negative 1. But it's really not negative 1. It's just get infinitesimally closer to negative 1, but it's never, ever really going to hit it. Just Desmos can't round that way. So... This is pretty much the information you need. Now, some in interesting statements on this one. It doesn't have any vertical asymptotes, but you can make the statement that it does have horizontal asymptotes. You can also make the statement that the domain is all real numbers. So unlike uh, when we just had 1 over x squared where you, didn't, you couldn't use 0, this one, because of the plus 1 in the denominator that we see up here, 
means that we will have all real numbers for our x value. Then it will also be our range. Our range will go to the 4. So you see here I have negative 1 is less than y. And negative 1 is what it's never going to hit. That's why it doesn't say less than or equal that to y. And then y is less than or equal to 4. So it is a solid point at 4. So 4 is part of its solution set. So those are the things from this video. And then we'll actually go ahead and summarize those also on the slide. Okay, so to summarize this function and really the entire lesson, because this was the only problem on it, um, some summary statements on this one. One of them could be our domain is all real numbers. And part of the reason for that is our x squared plus 1 that we have in our original equation in the denominator will never evaluate to 0. So we have no asymptotes here. If that 1 was not there, then yes, we would have uh, 0 as an asymptote. So then our range y is less than or equal to 4, which we see here, but it never hits negative 1, so it's just greater than negative 1. And that is pretty much some of the summary statements. If you look at the actual table here, you also see that this goes into infinite discontinuity, which is a concept that you'll learn more about when you get into pre-calculus. So that should summarize pretty much everything, and we'll see you on the next video.